Hello, my name is Jeremiah Simeon, as my viewers should know me. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about, or should I say in this documentary, I'm going to talk about human sexuality, actually as mankind sexuality. And I have did some discovery, or should I say some research on this subject I'm doing because I usually like to do a lot of research when I do a lot of uh, documentaries. Not only that, if I write stories, if any of my readers have seen my story, I mean read my stories, I mean probably you've seen maybe a preview and read the preview of the story, you kind of understand exactly how I write these stories or how I usually film these documentaries with the information I found. A lot of information I found in books, usually online, a lot of information in books and on the internet usually or sometimes should I say might not be always true to the fact. So with these documentaries that's why I want my viewers, whoever buy these documentaries, the customers, to kind of give it some thought on what do you think is true to the fact because there's a lot of information out there we live in an information society so it should be something everybody wants but a lot of people don't want to read don't want the information I uh, suppose they just want to give it to you uh, free of charge a lot of information is free of charge if you think about it, not all of it. So, to begin, well, I started to look up how some humans in the world are gay. And it's very interesting. A lot of people are not sure where the origin originated from exactly. So, I'm going to be trying to give you as much information as I can and then with the information I have hopefully you'll be able to the viewer to make your own conclusions well some people think about it as as if it started either in the 2000 in the 1990s 1980s or 1970s all the way to the 1960s some people think it might have started all the way to 1800s if you think about it where the Europeans decided to explore for new land but if you think about it I have did some research and my research doesn't go all the way through Rome but it, it is part of it in ancient times with the Romans if anybody in the world recalls, in ancient Roman times, a soldier, a male soldier, could have sex or hook up with a male or female slave or servant at the time. Two male soldiers couldn't hook up to together because they thought that it was against their laws okay also if uh, anybody think about it in ancient Greece when a teacher or they would call them masters would take on apprentices or pupils or students whatever you want to call them Sometimes the students were younger and the teacher or the master was a little older. And usually they take these teachers or masters take on male students, pupils, uh, apprentices, whatever you want to call them. That uh, did happen in ancient times. Also, in ancient times, they had people different people like we have in today's world like our 
was told that old saying, nothing is new under the sun. Well, I suppose that is true to a certain degree, a certain fact. They had some that was having sex with minors, with children, which we have today, which is against the law. It was, It is against the law in these ancient cultures as well. Usually the students or the pupils would be teenagers, which today's standard is also against our laws. But back then, just like in Roman, when you were a teenager, which they considered you a man or a woman when you were 14, 13 or 14 years old. So, not only did it happen in these times, it also happened all the way through Egypt. Where two male guards could not have sex with one another, but they could have sex with their slaves. Pharaohs, male pharaohs could not have sex with other male pharaohs. They could have sex with their slaves sometimes, but usually it was forbidden. Sometimes these male pharaohs did have sex with one another. Everything, like I said, was done behind closed doors. Not too many people heard, of, of, heard stories of this. Or if they did, they secretly passed it down through generations, which finally led up to some of these stories that you find online or these stories that's in libraries, as well as it could be any bookstore any, anywhere around the world. Well, when I learned in Egypt is that the Egyptians talk about the old world or the ancient time before them. Well, long ago, or should I say centuries, it could have been millions, almost millions or billions years ago, where it talks in the Bible where the sons of God slept with the daughters of men and had giants. According to the, uh, the research I've learned, is that these giants and they have found a giant in Iceland it was a 30 feet tall it's, they found bones should I say of a giant that's about 30 feet long and they discovered not only that they discovered in another country which I'm not I forgot the name of it but it's another country if you think about it and you can, you can, like I said, my viewers can always look up all the information I'm talking about online if they need to. Where they found little people, uh, what they call midgets, little people, that are three foot, four foot, they found bones of it. So, I suppose, that in that old, if that older time, where the giants ruled, where they had, what they call little people, midgets, or whatever you want to call them, which some might call them imps, whatever. Anyway, these giants, these people during that time, this was supposed to be during uh, Noah's time, his time frame, a timeline, where these giants, not only these giants, but these other people were practicing what they call homosexuality. They were gay. So, my research led me all the way to the giants who were doing that. Not only that, they were also into what they call bestiality. They were having sex with animals as well. But, not only did it lead me there, but the research led me to what a lot of people probably don't know. And I, I think I've discussed this before. I'm not sure if I've discussed this or I might have. But apparently there are seven unknown races of mankind. And then there's one that's called the pre-Adamic or pre-damned race. Later on where I found out that these people were practicing the same thing as these gay people are practicing to, up to date. So it leads me all the way back to this other society where I remember that old saying that nothing is new under the sun. 
So with the information I found, and hopefully it'll probably be in some of my stories, which a lot of readers have bought some of my stories, especially my short stories, which I want to thank you. I also want to thank the people for renting and buying my documentaries as well. This is kind of a thank you too in this documentary. So basically, that is the origin, or that's how gay people originated from this ancient race that I talked about, the pre-Adamic or pre-damned race. So, how did it got spread? I guess since it started after, after uh, the pre-Adamic race was supposed to be destroyed. That was with the dinosaurs during their time. Well, what happened was is when the Creator, or some people call him God, Jesus, or whoever, which I feel personally the Creator doesn't really have a name since I remembered in some of the movies, and I think it's, it, it is in the Bible where he said, tells Moses that I am who I am. So I am is who this Creator is, and I think this Creator who created everything is filled with the energy or is this spiritual being if you want to call well from there if anybody remembered when after the flood happened which a lot of cultures if anybody read about it talks about the flood even in Babylon in Egypt Greece you know all the ancient time Romans when they ruled the land with all of these people had certain powers or certain authorities on earth or they conquered different territories in the world they talks about that like the emperors in Rome who were bisexual and some of their stories got passed on and that's how a lot of stories got passed on through word of mouth generations ago these people this is what they were doing before they were writing and usually they were writing on stone walls, stone tablets. Then later on they were writing on papyrus or some sort of paper they were using. So, through word of mouth, through history, you find out a lot of different things. Like I found out, not only have I found out about this, I found out uh, information of the uh, 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 these people from Europe, from Africa from North South America the Indians who used to live in North America some of the Incans the Mayans these cultures in South America some that's how you learn history throughout Asia through Australia that's how you learn your history by not only reading the Bible but taking that Bible and also taking other historical books and adding everything with it to come up and also you can go online to come up with certain conclusions in life which I've made some of these conclusions so from there like I said from the generations when Noah after, like I said after the flood when Noah and I, I suppose this is part of the Bible I've heard this on the radio from this uh, preacher pastor who started talking about it where one of Moses son-in-laws at the time saw Noah naked on a rock sunning himself and he had these thoughts of uh, homosexual thoughts uh, thoughts of hooking up with his father-in-law and I suppose from that moment in time that like people think, some people think it's a gene, some people think they were born with it, some people state that they choose this lifestyle. Uh, I have myself started also researching it and I've learned that sometimes a gay man has 37 chromosomes. As human beings, all human beings have 36 chromosomes. As a gay man, they're supposed to have 37. As a, a woman that's gay, she has only 35. So it could be, some people think it's neurological, it's in the head, some of the uh, information in the mother's womb doesn't pass to the infant, 
that's being born, the baby that's being born. So it kind of makes it, I suppose, difficult for them to understand. According to the Bible, it stated that these, in Romans, if you would have to read the first chapter, all of it, and it states that their women left their natural use of men and burning lust with other women, and men did the same thing, the burning lust with other men. And then also I found out in my book, and, uh, and not, not just, not about, not my books personally, but doing my research in these books, I found out that some people might think it's a sin sickness. Some people think that it's demons that inhabit the body. I found out that the giants were called Nephilims, if you want to think about it. And these Nephilims, who were gay, supposedly enters into the human body and makes these people do what they do. So with all this information that I, I just spit it out, I just threw out to you, my audience, to you, viewers, I want you to kind of understand what I'm talking about, what I'm trying to reveal to different people that watch these documentaries. Uh, all of my documentaries are informational documentaries and I do want a lot of people to get my information or should I say get a little bit of my knowledge as I'm throwing it out to you to kind of understand our society as a whole and I hope everybody understands that some some of these diseases that are also passed down through generation of different people like probably cancer is one of them which sometimes it could be the food you eat and sometimes it's the air you breathe sometimes like AIDS which I'm sure a lot of people know which was man-made created in a laboratory somewhere in Africa and which was this uh, patient zero that came to America and started spreading it and now it's being spread it out throughout the world but anyway by understanding I think understanding the knowledge that if everyone tries to understand information that's being thrown out maybe as humans since I think that we were born to help one another that we are also born to maybe educate one another to uh, try to make others understand about any and everything that happens in life. And that's how, what I feel that we should be doing as humans. We should be pushing out information which can be from the Bible, which can be from history. We should be pushing out information to others who don't know it, information in the world. A lot of people will receive the information and a lot of people won't. And I understand that personally. That if you, you think about the past, it's the past. But think about this. Even though we live in a present time, some children will grow up wanting to know not only history of mankind, but the history of their ancestors as they grown up, as I've learned about my ancestors. As I found out that my, and I'm going to give you a little brief history of my ancestors. I think I did in some of my autobiography, well, or some documentary, well, my great-grandmother, her mother was a, from, a woman from Spain, her father was from France, she, uh, she was a bright-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde-headed woman from France, and her husband was from, from Spain, I mean, and her husband was from France, he was a brown-skinned, brown-eyed Frenchman, brown hair. Then my great-grandfather, his mother was a mixed Indian, and his Father was a mixed African, which they had brown hair, brown eyes. Then later on, I found out that I'm related to King Simeon, who used to rule Poland at that time. Then I also recall my grandfather, who told this story where about the king, not only about the king, but uh, who told a story about his grandfather, who used to live in Puerto Rico, and his grandmother, who used to live in the Dominican Republic. Then I found out that my ancestors go all the way back, not just to Poland, but not just to parts of Africa, 
uh, parts of the United States, but also all the way back to Israel. Part, we're part of the Simeon tribe. So that's how all the Simeons are related. And they spell it different. They spell, might spell it with S-E-M-I-E-N, S-I-M-I-E-N, or S-I-M-E-O-N. However you want to spell it. So that's a little bit of my history that I added to this documentary for my viewers to understand. So a lot of people look at me and basically I'm supposed to be according to the Louisiana government or according to this whatever, state of Louisiana, the world, whatever. Some people look at me as though I look like a white guy. Some say I'm black. Some say I'm Hispanic, Latino, Arabic, just depends. But according to the state of Louisiana, I'm supposedly supposed to be a black man. Okay, so it doesn't matter my racial background. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation. A lot of people don't know if I'm straight, gay, or bi, which that just eludes them. My feeling is I don't care what racial background I am, what sexual orientation you are. It shouldn't be who you are, what you do. It should be all of these things as being part of your characteristics. You are, everybody's who they are, but once we, if you go deeper into learning your history, you'll find out that you are, everybody in the world is mixed somehow. It doesn't matter if your skin is bright or your skin is brown or dark. We all mix somehow in what they call the family gene, family pool. So everybody has an ancestor, might be from, that used to live in Africa that was enslaved, might be an Indian, might be somewhere from Europe or Asia or Australia or South America, Mexico, wherever. Could be anywhere in the Caribbean, wherever your ancestors started to mix that is how we became the society we are. That's how you became who you are. So I hope I've answered some questions too. And hopefully my viewers and my readers who read my books, hopefully my fans who listen to my music, or whoever, everybody who listens to my music, I want to thank you all for doing that. I do appreciate it. I love you all because of without all of you, my readers, my viewers, customers, my fans, whatever, that maybe I forgot. Even I also like to thank some of the film company, independent film companies taking me on, the independent labels. Uh, I would like to thank different internet radios, different radio stations. Thank you all for taking me on. Because without the media, I wouldn't be able to have an outlet to do what I'm doing. So I want to thank you all and I do appreciate my viewers for giving me a chance to explain or giving me a chance to express myself with giving a, a lot of you out there information. Not only about this, but about, about climate changes since our climate is changing since a lot of people in the world are suffering with sinus problems that I've been reading online. So, I mean, with all of that, I feel the more information we have as a society, the better of our chances of doing something about it. Sometimes one person can make a difference. And I want to thank you all. And I love you. Thanks.
Love you, baby. Forever.